Um, okay, so... Fuck. Alright, we're on... <laughs> Chapter 5, Magic Day of the Custody of Angus MacDonald. Um, we've been having custody battle, and Taco is getting more and more, like, exposed as having a person who has feelings and emotions. Um, he's <laughs> trying desperately not to, but it's starting to happen. Um... Uh, what else? I think mostly he's trying not to let his hand show it, like, why he wants to adopt Ango. Yeah. Um, just looking through the dialogue here, it looks like it's mostly Taco and someone named Kravitz? Oh, yay, Kravitz! Um, I'm gonna do Kravitz's voice. Sure, so yeah. I was thinking I'll do narration, and you'll do, like, all the voices. Yeah. Seems like they're all characters that you do. Yeah, Kra uh, Kravitz is, um... Uh, Taco's boyfriend, who is the Grim Reaper. Oh, oh cool! That's awesome. Or a Grim Reaper, a a Reaper for the for the Raven Queen, but uh, yeah, very funny shit. I love the description for this chapter. Angus grinds corn for fifteen minutes and gets a second dad. <laughs> God, thank goodness. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready, and I'll start. I'm good to go. <laughs> Not once did the trial did Taco neglect Magic Day. Magnus brought Angus over, same time every week, to learn and practice new spells. Today, Angus was working through Rope Trick. Once story and song was over, Taco insisted on teaching him higher level spells. Magic Boy wouldn't go anywhere if all he could cast was Mage Hand. Enchanting the rope was no problem. That came very naturally. At this rate, it would be time to pick a specialization soon. Angus was leaning hard in conjuration and divination. Taco wasn't entirely thrilled about having to send Angus off to a university, but the boy had a talent that couldn't be wasted. The real trouble was ripping through extra-dimensional space. Angus couldn't tear through and kept poking tiny holes instead. It's all right. It takes a while to do the first time. This was mostly a lie. Taco had picked up on extra-dimensional portals quickly when he was first getting into the meat of wizardry, and he didn't want to make Angus feel bad for not understanding. Lately, Taco had been using a more gentle approach to teaching. Not to say he was horrible before. He was always a good teacher. Somehow, he kept that after the void fish. But after remembering what he had lost, he was even better. A lifetime of learning with his sister, and becoming a wise legend in the Legato Conservatory, teaching Barry to swim. It put sense to Taco's interest in teaching Angus magic. It always felt weird to Taco that he, a celebrity, a chef, a guy with a heavy distrust of other people, would feel good after giving Angus a lesson. It made perfect sense now. Angus steadied himself, took another loop of parchment and ground corn, and started his incantation again. He barely got halfway through the spell when a giant rift appeared in the room, tall and wide enough for an adult to walk through. The rope wasn't going into it, but that was hardly the problem, because Angus did it. Taco shook Angus's shoulder, hardly believing his eyes, yelling, Hell yeah, that's the ticket! Sir, that wasn't me! Venter and Sudan stared nervously at the rift in space. A tall, dark, and handsome man stepped out. Well, not dark and handsome yet. He was still all bones, easing Taco's nerves. Wait, no, Taco became more nervous, because now Kravitz and Angus were in the same room, and, oh no, he still hadn't told Kravitz about the custody case. Sorry if this is a bad time. I finished a bounty early, and... Kravitz glanced over at Angus. Hello. Angus was shaking, because it's not every day that an 11-year-old sees a reaper. He pointed his little wand towards Kravitz, <laughs> afraid that he was here to take his or Taco's life. Kravitz was not prepared to be threatened by a small boy. It was kind of amusing. He tried his best not to move or startle Angus, and looked to Taco for some kind of explanation. Shit, no, Ango, he's not here for business. We're tight. Taco stood up to greet Kravitz, but... Mm, no, he couldn't just run up and kiss him or anything. Kids here... Kravitz didn't seem keen on greeting him like the usual either. At least his skin calmed down once Kravitz's skin came back on. He lowered his wand and asked, Sir, why do you know an emissary of death? 
Taco wasn't prepared for this conversation yet. Angus, can you, uh, I think we've run out of powdered corn for the spell, so... Taco fiddled with an earring, trying to calculate the best way through the situation. There's a mortar and pestle in the top left cabinet. Would would you be a deer and grind some dried corn in there so we can continue the lesson? Angus knew this was an excuse to get him out of the room. Taco knew that Angus knew, because he's the smartest boy in the world, but that didn't matter because this was Taco's nightmare situation. Angus was polite enough to give his mentor a break. Of course, sir. Um, how long does it usually take to grind corn? Ten minutes. Taco was relieved at how quickly this kid caught on. Then, I guess it'll take me fifteen minutes, because I'm a little slower than you. Angus smiled, leaving the room. Damn, this kid was good. Kravitz waited until Angus left the room before asking. That boy is... Angus, he's the world's greatest detective, and... Obviously the smartest fucking kid ever. Paco sat down, offering Kravitz to do the same. When we were on the moon, I started teaching him magic, and we've just made it a habit. That's extremely sweet of you, Taco. Why didn't you say so earlier? Kravitz smiled. The idea of Taco having a soft spot for this boy was endearing. Well, I mean, that's all it was before. Taco was nervous certainly more than he should be about being nice to a child. Kravitz knew Taco was still combing through a lot of his feelings, but he shouldn't be getting this worked up over something so small. Look, I'm gonna say something, and it's not... I don't know how this is going to go down, but, uh, yeah, Taco's full of surprises, I guess. You certainly are. Kravitz laid his hand on Taco's, trying to settle him down. Taco, this isn't such a big deal. You've taken on a little apprentice. That's very... Taco, put a bit of distance between him and the Reaper. That's not everything. Rabbit, stay quiet. I'm... Damn it, you have to promise you won't freak out. I won't, please. Go on. See, here's the thing. Angus is a, a great boy, and he, he doesn't have anywhere to go, or at least anywhere suitable, and so I guess I I thought I'd... Taco took a deep breath. I'm adopting him. He hadn't said that exact string of words out loud yet. It felt nice to say it out loud. But again, no. This wasn't the time for those feelings, because Kravitz was looking at him like he was from another planet. Okay, never mind. That part's true, but he was shocked. Not mad or angry, but hearing Taco say he was going to adopt a child definitely threw him off. I'm dating a single father? N no, not... well, I guess not yet. Taco ran a hand through his hair, and now he was rambling. His family is fighting over him. From what I've seen and heard from his aunts, there's no way they should be allowed to care for a child. It's just bad vibes all over the place with them. I kind of got myself stuck in the middle of their custody case. It's me against his two shitty aunts, and... Look, I might not be totally great at it either, but I know he deserves better, and I just want to give him another option. Taco, that's delightful. Gravit said, interrupting him. He was smiling again. How old is he? Ele eleven? Taco said in a daze. He was okay with this? I was going to tell you soon, I promise. It's just, it's not something that's easy to say out loud. That's understandable. Still smiling somehow. You're not mad? Taco didn't know what sort of reaction he would get after confessing he was going to adopt an actual, real human child but he sure wasn't expecting Kravitz to look happy. This isn't... You're not ending us, right? It's... Well, honestly, it might take some adjusting, but I'm not going anywhere, Taco. Kravitz pressed a quick cheek, a quick kiss on his cheek. I, uh, assume we need to have a different, longer conversation about this later, but the boy can't grind corn for another hour while we work this out. The taco's head was spinning. This was the best- this was best-case scenario, right? He squeezed Kravitz's hand, 
afraid that at any moment he would leap out and say, Surprise, I'm leaving. But he didn't. He was smiling and listening, and interested in Taco's relationship with the boy. Right, you're, uh, you're right. Uh, I've got to finish my lesson with him. Can I stay for the lesson? Is that okay? I would like to talk to Angus a little as well, if that's all right. Y yeah, I don't see why not. Right on time, the sound of small hands knocked on the door. Paco got up to answer it, letting Angus back into the room. He had some of the corn in a bag, but it definitely wasn't 15 minutes worth of corn grinding. Mental note, kid needs some kind of reward for being so goddamn considerate. Uh, Angus, this is Kravitz. Taco led Angus over to the Reaper. He knew Kravitz wasn't going to freak out and leave, but the whole situation made Taco's hand shaky. Uh, my boyfriend. I deduced that myself from the way the two of you were acting. Smug little bastard. Angus extended an arm towards Kravitz and smiled. Oh, I scrolled and lost my fucking... I... I haven't heard much, but Taco spoke... No, wait, no. I... It's nice to meet you, Mr. Kravitz. Kravitz took the handshake, very formal and polite. I haven't heard much, but Taco spoke very highly of you in the small description I was given. I haven't heard anything of you, so I hope there will be time to change that. The two of them went back and forth for a half hour. Angus asked a lot of questions about the astral plane and the exact circumstances of Kravitz's contract with the Raven Queen. Only Angus could turn death into a light and breezy conversation topic. Kravitz was so, so patient with the kid. It became obvious to him quickly that there wasn't much need to dumb down his answers, so he was able to get into a good amount of detail without getting too gnarly. Watching them interact with Paco at ease. After letting the two loose on their conversation, it was time to bring Angus back down to the lesson. Don't think for a second you're getting out of magic day just because my man's here. You're not leaving until I say a tear through extra-dimensional space, you hear me? Yes, sir! Angus sat back on the floor, reading over the incantation again and checking to see if his materials were all in order. You're... teaching him how to tear a rift? He was worried. Taco shushed him. Just a little one, so he can do rope trick. Mr. Kravitz, sir, you made a very large rift earlier. Do you have any tips on how I could improve mine? Hey, I'm not a good enough teacher for you now. Taco faked a pout. Sir, I think you know that's, excuse my language, horseshit. Angus got a few laughs out of Taco for that one. I just thought, since I'm stuck on it, it might be nice to hear a different explanation. Taco waved dismissively at Angus. I'm messing with you. Krav, you got anything? Kravitz was hesitant to answer, but nodded. Most of my experience with interplanar rifts comes from my ability as a bounty hunter, but I can certainly try to explain what I know. The three of them worked for a long time on rope trick. Kravitz was horrible at explaining what he was doing. But he was so calm and reassuring that Angus didn't really mind. Taco suspected that Angus figured out the extra-dimensional tearing 40 minutes in, but kept flubbing it on purpose to spend more time talking to Kravitz. Cute. But also, the boy was getting tired, and even though he wasn't casting Rope Trick entirely, he had done it enough times to become exhausted. Magnus! Magnus shouted, running in on the lesson. All three boys jumped up in surprise, sending Magnus into a fit of laughter. It's, it's getting really late, isn't it? Mind if I take him back? Taco made a face that just screamed, Yes, Magnus, I do mind, but ended up saying, No, nah, he's been all up in my in my biz all afternoon, take him. Agnes, make sure to rest in between your self-practice this week. You're not made of spell slots. Of course, sir. Angus left to join Magnus. On their way out, Magnus waved at Kravitz. Hey, how's your suit? Still greasy on the shoulders? You should have seen Taco. Taco's voice went up three octaves as he pushed Magnus out of the room. It's getting late, Magnus! The boy needs to be in bed! 
Now, so that's what that was. Kravitz snickered. Taco walked Angus and Magnus to the door, saying goodbye. That same jabbing feeling came to punch him in the heart, but Kravitz interrupted the whole ordeal. Taco? Yeah. Kravitz once Agnes was out of earshot. Yeah. Kravitz pointed in the direction the boy left. I love him. Oh, shit. He was already invested. How the hell could a single man be so sincere? Taco could barely say anything half something half as sweet to Angus, but here Kravitz was, saying it after spending less than three hours with him. He wasn't fibbing either, and it was so, so nice to hear it in his voice. There was a sense of stability that came from hearing Kravitz say he loved Angus already. And no shit, it's Angus. Everyone does. <laughs> nice. I like that story. It's, so it's good. I love Taco allergic to sincerity, Taco. Uh -huh. Your voice is really good for him too. I like that. It, <laughs> I I'm doing I'm doing a decent job at like the the OG Taco voice. I think I might nice. I may or may not go back and listen or in to try to center it again, or I may just let it devolve. Nah, let it develop on its own. Yeah. Um, okay.